Hey, good morning. So, <clears throat> I'm sitting here and I'm reading a little bit of different spaces this morning. So, before the Israelites was allowed to enter the promised land, Moses had to die. And I say it this way because I hope you had some coffee this morning. Because I hope you had some coffee. <clears throat> because if you look at Joshua chapter 1, it begins by saying, So after Moses died. Now Moses had been told by God sometime before that he will not enter the promised land. He will only get to see it from a distance because of the incident that happened with the water and the rock. Um, and if you don't know, to give you a quick brief one, is that there was a time when there wasn't any water for the Israelites and they turned against Aaron and Moses and they went into the tent and spoke to God. And God told them to gather at this rock and speak to the rock and he will bring forth water. But Moses ended up losing his temper with the people because they probably got disgruntled and chaotic and mull and, and all those interesting things and lost his temper with them. He cast them out and then the Bible says he struck the rock twice. And because he, he struck the, the rock like that, um, he actually says here in Numbers chapter 20 verse 12, he says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and says, Because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land of which I have given them. So they didn't keep God holy in front of the people. Um, because of their action, you know, because it, it makes sense uh, if you think about it, because now they think, okay, there's this aggressive move, slam, smack the rock, break the rock, and then water will come out. So to activate God, we need to get aggressive. I suppose that's one perspective. Um, anyway, so after he's passing, God comes to Joshua, and he's, remember Joshua was one of the two guys that came back that Moses sent to spy out the land. He's one of the two guys that came back and said, we can take it. We can take this land, man. We can take it. It was him and Caleb. Now, Joshua is the one that uh, ended up being the leader of the Israelites or, or leading them after Moses had passed away. But after Moses' passing, then God came to Joshua telling him, listen, it's, it's time. Let's, let's go. Let's do this thing. It's time. But what I wanted to point out this morning is what was pointed out to me this morning that I wanted to share. And, and this, is, this is very cool what God actually tells Joshua in a very short time in terms of verses. Now, it's it's very difficult to know, I think, how much time passes between verses in the Bible, you know. So, in Joshua chapter 1, uh, this is verse 5 through 9. So, before that, it's just a little bit of intro. As I said, it's after Moses died, God spoke to Joshua and told him all these things. But from verse 5 to 9, it, it's great. Verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Promise. Verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers before them, to give them. Verse 7. Right now, remember our verse 6 started. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to the law of Moses, my servant, which I have commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go so stick to the word be strong be courageous and then this book of law shall not depart from your mouth uh, it shall not depart from your mouth yes and you shall meditate it on it night and day that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you should you sh for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so you will so you will be strong you will be courageous you will be of uh, good courage or very courageous or you know and you will meditate on the word and you will not waver from it from the right to the right or to the left and then verse 9 ends by saying have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid do not be dismayed but the lord your god is with you wherever you go twice over here it says it is with him he will be with you wherever you go. And three times that I can quickly count, he says, be strong and be of good courage. Have I not commanded you? Do you see these magnificent promises that God brings into this place over here, my friend? And I, I just want to think in that, you know, in this, I thought, yes, what promises has God made me? What direction has God put me in? Where do I need to go for him? What promises have God made to you that you know are promises? What is your promised land? Where is your promised land? And I want to remind you that God is a promise keeper. You know that, right? Because he ended up taking the Israelites into the promised land. 
the reason why they had to wait so long, I know the world says, yeah, it's six days walk and they traveled for 40 years or something. The reason why one of the, one of the spaces where I believe why it was that long is because the, the crowd that came out of Egypt still had a captivity mindset, a servant mindset, a bondage mindset. And they didn't really truly understand this freedom still. So if you look at all the stories, that's how many, why they kept on stopping believing. They can't believe that this stuff can happen. These things can, you know, even with they got fire that led them at night. They had clouds that led them by day. And yet still they had this level of unbelief sort of thing, you know. So I've, I've heard people explain, and it's actually quite cool, that that generation had to die out. Because all the kids that came from them were born in freedom. They didn't know the bondage of Egypt. They didn't know the servant. They didn't know how terrible that level of living actually was. So I think that's why. So uh, uh, people with a bondage mindset, I think, probably would struggle to properly utilize this beautiful land that's been given to them where they can work and plant and, and do all these things, even though they knew how. But if you look at how many turns they turned against Moses and Aaron, is that a leader that led them, I want to say softly, this day they ended up turning against them often all the time sort of thing, you know. But anyway, so, but this, this is, these promises is what God promises you as well. You can make this your own. This is something that he will be with you, he will not leave you, and he will not forsake you, my friend. And, and how close is God to you? you? Ever thought about that? It's actually very simple. The Bible says it as well. He's in every fiber of your being to begin with. But it says, the Bible says the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. And the word of God is God. So it's in you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. Oh, man. I mean, my goodness, if you look at the chemical composition of DNA, they, they've, they've seen, I've seen some videos recently, which has probably been around forever, but I only discovered a couple months ago. I came across this, that, you know, the, the chemical compositions, whatever those chemicals and things are that, in the DNA, I don't speak science, unfortunately, but they see the letters YHWH written there, which is Yahweh. You know, so God has, oh, he's engraved himself in your very DNA, my friend. So he is with you. He, you are made of him. If you listen to your breathing, you know, it says in the beginning, it says God blew the breath of life into Adam. So he, God blew his breath of life into you the day you were born. That's why the doctor slaps you on your bum so you can just get God's air into your lungs. You go, ah, and then you cry and it's all like a fantastic and things. Because you've got God's breath in you. So if you listen closely to the way you breathe, you will, re you will hear the words Yahweh between inhaling and exhaling. Yahweh, Yahweh. Cool, right? I don't even know if that's going to go over the mic, but let's see. But just listen to the way you breathe. So God is always there. You're always speaking God's word. Whether you realize it or not, you are always speaking God's name. It's crazy, right? So I need you to stop giving excuses in your life. The challenges will always be there because it helps you to grow. It needs you to grow. You need to grow for where you need to go. You need to die to yourself. You need to pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow Jesus. You need to keep your eyes on him. The reason Peter sank is because he took his eyes off Jesus. He paid attention to the issues around him. He didn't keep focused on, on the Lord. He didn't keep focused on Jesus. And you need to keep focused on Jesus because God tells you exactly what, where to go, what to do, that he'll be with you, and that he'll sort out the things that aren't your business to sort out. The Lord himself will fight for you. The Lord himself goes before you. So the God preps everything. God preps everything for you, my friend. This is what I need you to realize. So you need to start believing. No, remember also, no weapon formed against you will prosper. So these challenges are there to make you grow, not to defeat you. You can only lose when you give up. Don't give up. Be strong and be of good courage. Start believing and keep on believing the promises of God over you and over your life. Be strong, be of good courage and start moving forward and enter into that promised land. Enter into the land that God has promised you.